do. All right. So I am here with Professor Alexandra Knight. I'm going to use your whole name this morning. And she is the founder and the CEO of STEM Amazing. She has been doing a lot, a lot of good work in the community globally and just helping a lot more people get involved in STEM. So I am so happy to have you here with me. It's still my morning. I know it's not morning for you, but it's still my morning on my <laughs> side. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's a sunny day, so it feels like morning yeah. <laughs> and I still have lots of energy. So that's a good sign. <laughs> Always a good sign. Always a good sign. She's, she's one of our authors in the book. Like she has an amazing chapter and I love the title of your chapter. It's called Be the Change You Want to See. And that is something that I resonate with quite a lot because we have to be that change. And I know just in terms of my background, you know, growing up, I didn't see any female engineers. So I didn't know what an engineer was. You know, a lot of people asked me that while I was going to school. You want to be an engineer? What is that? Is that the person that drives the train? No, it's not the person that drives the train because that's what that's the only thing that we knew about at that point in time. Yeah. That's what we mm-hmm. associated an engineer with. So I'm so glad that you're doing so much of the work to sort of bridge those gaps. And I want to ask you a question. Tell us a little bit about what you do. What is what is like a day in the life of? How is, how is your, I'm going to call it a job, even though I think it's so much more than that. It's your passion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, um, first of all, thanks so much for this chat. It's lovely to speak to you. And thank you so much again for pulling together all the amazing contributors to the book. It's such a needed resource. Um, so, yeah, what do I do in St. Amazing? Well, now um, I, I run this not-for-profit and... We have six people in our team. So my day looks like chatting to people in my team, organizing the various programs we run, liaising with schools, um, Mm -hmm. supporting all the women in STEM volunteers that we have to go out into those schools, training them with our amazing kids resources so they can run really fun, hands-on interactive science and engineering experiments Mm -hmm. with young children um and fundraising like I have to speak to companies and get partners on board to fund what we do and so it's a whole variety of things and sometimes I spend the entire day just messing around and playing making up new experiments and testing those on my children and other local guinea pigs that I can find (laughs) Um, so I still get to do bits and pieces of like creative engineering which I love Um, And I do miss my job, like when I was a a proper engineer, I'd say, like working in industry when I used to do super cool projects from submarines to big bridges to wheelchair design. I I miss that work Mm -hmm. for sure. But I do what I do because it is so needed. And I think it's the foundation of the future of of STEM. It is because guess what? They are the ones who are going to be running the country, running the world, running the experiments, running the designs. In the near future, we're going to have to depend on them. We would love to be around forever and handle all of that, but we have to prepare them for what what is coming um, in the next decade or more because they are the ones who are going to have to carry us through that. But I want to ask you a question. And when I read your chapter, when you first submitted, I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. I loved it. I, I did not put it down which me, a lot of my other projects were probably, um, you know, felt bad about that. But um, I did not put it down. I just kept with it. And I was like, this is an amazing story. So I'm going to ask you the question. Why did you decide to write this chapter and, you know, share this journey with us in the book? I'm not going to give away anything of the chapter. You know, that is, that is you. That is your journey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest you asking me to write a chapter for this book was the start of me really connecting with my own story Mm -hmm. about why I am so passionate about what I do I think I'd sort of been a bit on autopilot and doing the things that felt right like the next right step Mm -hmm. that felt right in my life without really just pausing and reflecting on my whole life today and thinking but why am Mm -hmm. I so driven to do this why is it that I want to give up this great well-paid day job <laughs> all that job security 
in order to do this thing that is completely out of my comfort zone. And it was only really like when I wrote the chapter that I reflected on, okay, this all makes sense now. It's all like been leading up to this point. Mm-hmm. And my experience growing up with a disabled sister, feeling like I always knew that the world wasn't fair for some mm-hmm. people and that it wasn't right that people in the minority, whatever minority that is, don't get the same opportunities as people in the majority. Life is so much harder in so many ways mm-hmm. for them. And and I saw firsthand with the barriers my sister had having multiple disabilities that it I would compare how my life sort of flowed mm-hmm. with ease. Hers had lots of barriers. And then when I chose to do engineering and I was someone in the minority I was a woman full of Mm. in a room full of men and I started to realize there are barriers for me here this is what Mm -hmm. it's like this is what it feels like to be in the minority so I've definitely had lots of kind of like things in my life that have led me to kind of like creating this burning passion this fire inside of me for equity and inclusion and I've finally found a way to pull my experience, my strengths, my expertise together into doing something that I'm so passionate about and I'm really good at and I can really make a difference and really help other people. And it was really honestly you asking me to write this chapter that helped me connect all those dots. And now it makes so much sense. Yes, yes, it <laughs> does. What I was it always meant to do. <laughs> I'm so glad that that helped because a lot of the times like, People say, oh, you know, you should write a book about, you know, your life and what's going on. And people are like, oh, yeah, I'll get around to it. But when you sit with yourself and you start putting things in place and you're like, oh, my God, this is what happened. This is what it was all leading up to. So I loved I love the fact that you got to do that and um, that you brought us along. For the journey in the book because I know in the book you talked about some challenges even with starting your own company during COVID like I that was a struggle that was a total struggle I know a lot of people that you know can't decide to start their company even without COVID so you know putting that other barrier in place like there's a lot going on that we try to overcome and you just having that first hand experience with what your sister went through what you had to go through like I love the fact that you're breaking down these barriers for others because that's what it's about it's always about that you know me charting the way forward so that others don't have to do that so we we take a lot of the um barrier breaking um on ourselves to get those things down because if we do that then we can create a better future or a future that we did not have and that we didn't have to struggle for it. So always thank you for what you're doing with that. And so and I and I think it's really important that when you are fighting for something, whatever mm-hmm. it is, that you find a community that is supportive yes. of you. Maybe they don't have exactly the same views or the mm-hmm. same passion or the same experience but they support you to be that role model that you want to be for your reasons and I couldn't have done this if I didn't have you know a supportive family if I didn't have a supportive network if my boss at the time who went who I was working for didn't support me to say Mm -hmm. I like I believe you can do this and actually wanted me to follow my passion like I've been so fortunate with having people that have been supportive around me and that is what every person who's trying to do something that is breaking boundaries needs because it's mm-hmm. exhausting on your it own. And, and you know that. And, and I think this is what, you know, if we can show other people that, you know, being, doing your own thing, creating, you know, your own business or you're writing a book or whatever it is that is a huge stretch project, you can do it but mm-hmm. surround yourself with people that will support you, champion you along the way. and then nothing is impossible with the right level of effort and getting help where you need it. So yeah, I would say we absolutely need to do this work. I'm super passionate about it. And I also feel like I'm really passionate about empowering other people to say, if you see a problem, a challenge, don't think that's somebody else's problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Go and be the change you want to see yourself. 
because we all have that power in us. And that was really my key message for my chapter mm-hmm. in your book was to try and empower other people to say, don't let apathy or the fact that you're busy or these see all these barriers hold you back. Yeah. Be the change by just taking the next right step and finding people who can help and and actually just stick your head above the parapet be that visible role model that is willing to say I believe it could be different and this Mm -hmm. is what it could look like and never underestimate the power that you have as an individual we are all influencing and impacting people around us all the time you don't have to be famous and have a Mm -hmm. super job title and be rich and famous whatever you just Mm -hmm. every single individual has the capacity to be a role model and they are already role models so don't let that power of influence pass you by make the most of it oh I love that I definitely love that Alex thank you for saying it out loud and letting us know I know helping us to you know realize that because guess what all of our our neighbors our kids all of these people they look up to you from the moment they're born like you are their superhero, you are their role model. It doesn't matter what you do, you are that to them. So just recognizing mm-hmm. your power and your influence, you know, embrace it. And, you know, mm-hmm. let's work towards being the change that we need to see in the world. So I'm going to ask you one other question. What would you say to other people? And you, you basically almost said it just now, but if you had a, a, a leading thing to say, what would you say to inspire some more people to actually get involved in STEM? I know you're doing a lot of work with STEM Amazing, um, the way that you're getting more kids involved. What else can you say to other people just to get them more involved in STEM? I would say just don't underestimate what you can do as an individual mm-hmm. because I think a lot of people do think well what you know what can I do yeah if I only have an hour to spare for example what difference is that going to make yep. but research shows that especially when it comes to stem engagement one interaction with mm-hmm. a stem role model doing something like a careers event or a stem workshop makes young people three and a half times more likely to say that a career in stem could be for them And that is just one engagement. So imagine if they have multiple engagements. So the more we can get these everyday role models of people in STEM, they don't have to have Mm -hmm. STEM qualifications even. They just have to be working in a STEM organization and say, Mm -hmm. this is what we do in our company to open the eyes of young people to what is possible. And I would also say, be real and and don't try and kind of Mm -hmm. feel like you put pressure on yourself to be perfect go out there and and let them know like I always say like I was not the best at maths and science yeah I still got an engineering degree I just scraped into university I didn't get the grades I needed but I just scraped in and I came out with an engineering degree I've had a successful engineering career it's possible you don't have to fit all these stereotypes of being a science genius or or even you know being good with computers or Mm -hmm. any, any of those stereotypes engineering and stem can be a career for anyone with yeah. such a variety of different strengths and skills now i'm so pleased to see that some universities are saying you don't even need maths or physics a levels yeah. to go and do a degree <laughs> in engineering because you can learn mm-hmm. what you need to learn through project work through your courses right. and you don't need to do all this high level pure maths for example so yeah just be yourself be authentic show where you have vulnerabilities and weaknesses because you need relatable role models reachable role models to inspire Mm -hmm. young people and everybody listening to this has the capacity to be a role model they just need to get out there and do it yes I love that I definitely love that because sometimes we place so much you know, pressure on ourselves. And we're like, oh, no, we're not being a good role model today. Or, you know, I should have done this better. But just communicating that you should have done it better, that's what makes you the role model, rather than just hiding and just not doing anything about it. So that that helps to bridge the gap. And we do so much in our immediate community in terms of just speaking to others. You know, mm-hmm. on a daily basis, having a meeting or even having a conversation, that can help. Because 
STEM is all around us. I'm glad they, they're dropping those maths and physics barriers because I think um, a lot of times people learn differently and mm -hmm. entry entryways into STEM related careers are so different, especially mm -hmm. now because we have technology. Guess what? You don't need to physically do those math formulas ever again. Okay, let me not say ever again, but there is technology available to help you to do that. And with that technology, being able to use the technology, that gets you a little bit further. That gets you, you know, into the conversation and you can learn how to do that. So I'm glad that they're recognizing that. Like we are doing a lot of evolution in the in the university system, which is good. Thank God. And yeah. also in the workplace, because like there are a lot of jobs that that did not exist 10 years ago. Like what is an AI command prompter? That's a job in STEM, in a way. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, and we don't we can't even predict what all the job titles will no. be when these primary school kids that we're engaging with now, when they start work, there'll be jobs we don't even know that, no. that will exist. So we have to equip them with that mindset of mm -hmm. curiosity and creativity and courage that's our three yeah. seasons amazing be curious be creative be courageous mm -hmm. and if we can equip them with those skills that they practice through things like experiments when stuff will go wrong it will mm -hmm. fail you'll always learn something yes. and that's the important thing then we're hopefully setting them up to be our stem superheroes of the future yeah. because they recognize it's not just about what you know mm -hmm. it's about how you approach problems mm -hmm. and how you work well in teams and and the kind of questions that you ask and those are the skills that we want in stem that's how yeah. we create the diverse teams that will bring that step change in innovation that we need to solve our global challenges and if we if we're not inspiring more diverse young people then we're literally fighting a losing battle like we we won't yeah. be able to solve the challenges that we have in the world without a more diverse STEM workforce. Mm -hmm. So it is super important that we all get out there and inspire them. And like you say, break down those barriers, break down the elitism in STEM and just open the doors to more diverse talent to feel part of it. And who knows what jobs they will end up doing, but yeah. they'll be part of the STEM <laughs> ecosystem in some way. Yes. And the thing about it is if we keep doing the same things over and over we're not going to solve the challenges because we still have the challenges we need to approach these things differently and we need to start getting some more ideas in there because we cannot just you know use the same approaches and the same set of people and we're like okay this is the only group of people that can solve it no we need to be more diverse be more inclusive i love that thank you for that message alex i absolutely mm -hmm. love it and I know you are busy, very busy lady. So I'm going to give you back most of your day. And I want to thank you so much for all the work that you're doing with STEM Amazing. If you have not checked it out yet, you need to check out STEM Amazing. I'm going to do that plug for you. You can tell them where you can find you, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you go to stemazing.co.uk, mm -hmm. you can find our website there. And also you can follow us on at stemazing on LinkedIn or at stemazing1 on X and Instagram. Oh, X. Yes, I have to remember that one. Um, so check out Alex's chapter. Very interesting. She talks about so many things in there. Um, it's a really good read. The book is out. You know, try and get it, get your hands on it because there are a lot, lot, lots of good stories in there. And of course, just like Alex mentioned, we even have stories about people who have no background in STEM, but they're still making a difference. So thank you, Alex, so much for your time this morning, my morning, your afternoon. But thank you so much for your time and for staying with us. All right. Bye. Thank you so much. Lovely to chat to you. Bye.